guys, and welcome again to another exciting episode of The Intentional Investor. Today, we have David Richter. David is an active real estate investor who's done over 850 deals in the last seven years, including wholesale, turnkey, burr, owner finance, rentals, lease options, and pretty much any other uh, exit strategy that you can think of. From doing five deals a month to over 25 deals and the author of Profit First for Real Estate Investors. Mm -hmm. Bye. Amazing interview. What amazing. an amazing show. It was yeah. so good. What was it's, so good about it? There's so much. There's so much. There's so much. One, one way to, to think about it is that even if you're in the business or even just starting, you need to listen to this and you need to record it and you need to write things down because this could make or break your first year as a real estate investor. Yeah. I mean, to me, it could can, it can make or break you, period. Mm, period. Um, yep. And what I love, one of my major takeaways or the things that he talks about is how he does family first as well and how mm. he implements that. Yeah. That was a yeah. beautiful part. Really, really good nuggets there. Mm -hmm. He talked about the major things to implement in his life personally and professionally, including the top three accounts that every real estate investor needs to open. You guys, this is a phenomenal interview and we're hitting it right at the beginning of 2022. So I cannot wait for our audience to hear this. Mm-hmm. Are we ready? Let's yep. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Off to meet David Richter. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys, and welcome again to another exciting episode of The Intentional Investor. You guys, today we have David Richter, who is an active real estate investor, who has been closing over 850 deals in the last seven years. And he is the author of Profit First for Real Estate Investing. David, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, man. David. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Guys, I'm so excited about this show because this book is almost like it's 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 called in the same name as Robert Kiyosaki. Like in the main books to read, I've been hearing you got to read Profit First. There are just certain books that people say you have to read getting into real estate. So I'm super excited to have you here, David. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. It's definitely a, a concept that I think resonates with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I know it's changed your life. So before we dig into that, please tell us who is David Richter? You know, what gets you excited in the morning? Tell us about your family, your business. Sorry. Yeah, so I... I have a wife and daughter right now for a five-year-old. She just turned five. Can't believe she's five now. Wow. So yes. I, that's one of the things that gets me up in the morning is my daughter. <laughs> she was <laughs> up early this morning, but we play for about an hour in the morning before work. I set that intentionally. So that way I've got that time with her and to make sure that, you know, she feels loved and appreciated there. And that's one of the things that definitely excites me in the morning. Then the business that we're building here too, where I've got a fractional CFO business, part-time CFOs for small businesses and implementing profit first and just getting this message out there and especially to the real estate investing community. So those are a couple awesome. of the things that, that I love and that I'm passionate about. Can you dig into that fractional CFO, the business that you're building? Yeah. yeah. So most entrepreneurs know what a bookkeeper is. They know what a CPA is. You know, bookkeeper handles transactions, CPA handles the taxes. A CFO is more like a financial coach or financial strategist, like to help you with what do the numbers actually mean and how can you turn that into more, more revenue and, and a better bottom line profit. So that's what a CFO's function is, is to make sure there's actual strategy around that. And then on a fractional CFO is basically a lot of business owners are too small for a full-time CFO paying 150, 200 grand a year, but too large not to be focused on the finances and have someone helping them and guiding them. So that's where a fractional CFO comes in because at the fraction of a cost of a full-time CFO and the investment of time too, as well too, they're not full-time on the team. That way they can at least have someone there that's guiding them, directing them with the finances and helping them. So that's what a fractional CFO is. It's in between the bookkeeper and the and the CPA and to guide and direct the, the financial team. Awesome. And David, here, here's a question, right? So a lot of our audience, they are people who are nine to fivers just getting started in real estate. How important is this? Like, why do I even need to listen to this crap right now? So for the private first message, I would say that's, incredibly important because no matter if you are working nine to five and you never even open a business, 
you still have to manage the cash that's flowing through your hands. So this concept can be you know, applied to personal finances as well as business finances. But the whole point of this system that we'll talk about today is creating good habits, is helping you to make profit a habit inside your business. So the sooner you start that, the better habits you'll have when you're just starting out and then when you're down the road doing 100 deals a year or whatnot and you still have those same good habits, especially around managing your money and making sure you actually have cash in your bank accounts and cash profit and a true profit from your business. Man, wow. that's, that's so good. And, you know, it sounds like you implemented profit first. I, I don't know what you would call it. I guess you call it baby first in your life where you spend time with your, your little daughter first in the morning, right? <laughs> it's, it's almost like that. I've called that uh, several people have caught that several times and I call it the profit first life. Like at the beginning of the week hmm. or like in my calendar, I schedule these things in first, like the things that matter that are the most important things that like when I'm, you know, 50 years from now that I want to look back and say, well, I'm glad I did that. And you know what? All this other stuff, I'm not even going to remember what I did during the day. Huh. So it's like, wow. I'm going to remember that. And she's going to remember that I spent time with her. She doesn't care that I'm working. She doesn't care that I'm on a podcast or like an interview right now. You know what she wants to do? She wants to play. So that's where I have to build those times in because I know that's what's going to be what's truly wow. important down the road for at least me as the individual unit of my family. It's like profit first for life. Exactly. <laughs> it's like building in the, the correct yeah. things first. So how um, how did you start in real estate, uh, David? Are you, are you a, what is your background? What is your, do you have a trade before you start real estate? Not, not really. I was working at a railroad industry as a machinist, you know, like doing some of that type of stuff. But I've always been a reader just, you know, since I remember the first book I that really got me reading myself, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I mm. give mad, mad props to that book for getting me into reading <laughs> years ago. But I read someone gave me the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad in college. And that was it. Mm. You know, like then game over. My mindset was changed. You know, now I'm reading different types of books and like expanding my mind. Went out and bought a house right away. Like because mm. I don't just want to read. I want to implement. So I went out bought houses off the MLS when deals on the MLS <laughs> were abundant in 2012. And it was a HUD house of foreclosure. So fixed it up, actually rented it out for a while and made some cash flow, which was really cool. And then actually lived in there for a couple of years because that was the first house I moved into once I got married. Then for after two years, we uh, lease option that property. So wow. I put a, a lease option tenant in there and they paid on time. It was super tenant. And then six months later, he cashed me out. And wow. because of the tax tax laws, I was able to have no capital gains because I had lived in it for two years. So I was like, this is nice. I got to keep doing this. Yeah, so yeah. that's what got me even more interested in real estate and started working with a company that was doing like five deals a month. And we scaled that company to about 25, 30 deals a month. That's where I got involved in a lot mm. of the deals I did, where I was able to build more of a portfolio and like partner with them on some of these deals and actually like build a mini portfolio for myself and got a lot of great education. I sat in every seat while that scaled and grew, grew to like acquisitions, mm -hmm. dispositions, project wow. management, property management, because we did every exit strategy under the sun too. So I got to sit in all these different seats kind of as the utility man fix the process, put it and then put someone in there. So that's, I got a lot of experience just in small business because mm -hmm. one of the last seats I sat in too was the finance seat. Cause then I could see how the money flows from beginning to the end. Lots of things open my eyes there as well too. So that's kind of how I got into real estate investing, started working with a company too. And mm -hmm. there did hundreds of deals with really good people. And it was a lot of fun during that time. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, this, these are all in your book, so we don't want to spoil those, right? Those right? are yeah, the it's first okay. Yeah. I want people to get the message. If they yeah. can resonate with my story and I can get this message out there and it prompts them to read the book like mm -hmm. more, like let's do that because it's I've got yeah. a lot of good stories in there from yeah. people who have implemented it as well. Yeah, and, and what I love about it is you're actually the accidental CFO. <laughs> right? Yes, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. I am an accidental CFO yeah. because my background is not accounting, mm -hmm. finance, you know, yeah. bookkeeping, whatever. I basically for a year handled the finances of this business and just did a crash course with the CPA and had him sit down with me like for hours and like mm -hmm. asked a million questions. Then it clicked because like I picked up on it. I was like, okay, now I understand. I understand the different financial statements. I understand now from when we market a property to when we sell it or rent it, like how the mm -hmm. money flows. So 
it was definitely an education, you know, like the school of hard knocks at the beginning. Yeah. And not everyone is like that. Most of us, uh, well, I would assume, but a lot of us real estate investors, we're good at breaking down deals, underwriting, and even making money, right? But keeping money, right? Keeping money, that's a whole different ballgame. It's a, they're two distinctly different skills. Most entrepreneurs and business owners and real estate investors, especially have the skill of making the money. If you're in your nine to five job now, and you're even listening to this, you probably have the skill of making money or like, I'm good at going out, finding the deal, hunting it down, you know, and like, you know, you're, you're the kill and eat. I can do this. But then what is a totally different set of skills is being able to build the refrigerator and say, I need to store some of this meat for later too. Mm -hmm. you know, like being able to actually have the skill of keeping, you know, the money as well. So it's two distinctly different skills. And you know, what gets focused on is the hunting and killing what we're good at. Like there's a ton of courses and webinars and podcasts on marketing, on sales, on operations, even, you know, like the processes and the systems and the e-myth, you know, and all that. But there's very, very few books and like webinars and seminars and stuff on the financial side that make it fun, that aren't boring, that aren't dry, that aren't just like, holy cow, I would rather shoot myself in the foot than <laughs> listen to this, listen to this episode. So that's where that's why I also like profit first as well, because it's like it can talk to the entrepreneur and the business owner. Right. And and so let's step back a few, because what I want to understand for the people who are who has no idea, profit first, like I hear it, it doesn't really sound like it makes sense because typically you get the profit after expenses, right? Right. Let's talk about just the concept of what what is profit first? Let's do it. What is that? So there's two major parts to profit first, the mindset and then the practical application. What I'll talk about here and address specifically with this question is the mindset of profit first and what it is in general. So most of us, especially if you're if you're nine to five and you're going into real estate investing, you're going to learn very quickly that real estate investors love their formulas. So if you're a real estate investor, you're going to have a bunch of formulas that you learn. One of them that we get fed, though, is sales minus expenses equals profit, meaning we make a sale, we pay everyone else and their mother. And then we have whatever's left over at the end of the day, just like you were talking about. Like, that's what that's the typical entrepreneur, how we think, like, hopefully there's some event in the future that will happen maybe at the end of the year or like at the end of the quarter or something like maybe I'll have some profit, you know, that I get to take out and that's mine. But that keeps us in that scarcity mindset of like, I've got to always be paying the, you know, I've always got to be, you know, like if if I'm going to grow, I have to increase my expenses. You know, like I have to go out there and and fix the problem by throwing more money at it. That's where the profit first formula and the mindset comes into play and says, hold on, let's change this formula a little bit. It's sales minus profit equals expenses, meaning I make a sale. I chunk out my profit first or take my Mm. profit first, transfer it. And then my business has what's left over. Basically, I reverse engineer my business of what do I want to make from this business and what do I need? Number one, to see, is it sustainable? And number two, to make sure you're healthy. And then from there, those are the what's left over are the expenses to pay inside your business. And that is the big mindset shift that we need to get through as an entrepreneur. Because if we don't have that, that's where once you want to, if you start getting into business and then you're going to get the scaling bug of like, I want to scale, I want to grow, I want a team. But if you scale when you don't have profit and when you scale, when you have bad habits and you have problems, you're not going to magically scale out of those. You're going to scale into them larger, larger problems, larger bad habits, and then it's going to come crashing down. That's why having this mindset, separating your profit first, getting in that habit of giving yourself that safety net and truly feeling like a business owner that is successful and then has that money, you know, saved up first, then that's where we can then go from there and scale or whatever you want to do. But taking that profit first, making sure you're healthy. If you're getting into real estate too, and you're just starting out, you might've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So yep. we've heard this a yep. lot, like pay yourself first or the richest man in Babylon, a portion of all I have is mine to keep. Mm-hmm. So you might already be getting that mindset and re- profit first reinforces it. Like this is what, this is what that mindset is. 
So that's where I, I'm probably, you're probably going to ask too about the practical application. We'll go into that, but there's a practical way. That's where I feel like a lot of the books miss the mark of even Rich Dad Poor Dad, which is a life changing mindset shifting book. But where Profit First says, here's how you actually pay yourself first. Here's how you make that mindset a reality. Like, how do you actually do that? So that's why I like the second part of it as well. But the overall is making a profit a habit inside of your business from every deal, from every sale, no matter what type of entrepreneur you are going into that and helping make sure that your business is actually healthy and that you make profit a habit as soon as you can, because the sooner you can do it, I don't care if you're just starting out or if you're way down the road, that's a good time to implement it so you can get into the proper habits. Man. Amazing. You just said a lot. I feel like we could be done right there. Like, <laughs> like, oh, we're, we're, it's, it's over. Um, but let, let's break that down a little bit yeah, because do it. the mindset that it takes is so hard to change from spending money the way that you do now to this new concept and having to reiterate and do it over and over and so and believe in it because there is going to be a point where it looks like this just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. and because now you're you're setting aside money and it's going to look like you don't have enough money for the bills or the expenses and it, it's just like well what am i doing and why am i doing this and so it's it's almost and and like you said from the bible to the richest man in babylon putting aside money first it's all like life principles it's right. almost like law it should be law at this point um because it's so good for us to change our mindset and when i read it it was just like well damn this is obvious but it's like but it's not, you don't do it, you know? And, and just like we all know, like you, you burn some calories, you're going to lose weight, you know, but how many people got six packs, right? Like it's right. just not there. And so it's the mindset behind continuing on and just doing this um, to see the result is tremendous. Um, and I, I haven't finished the book because I'm one of those that, especially when it comes to the audiobook, I'm an audiobook guy. I pause and implement. And nice. if I don't implement why I pause, I'm not going to continue. Because what I started doing when I started with audiobooks was reading the entire book. Like, oh, this was great. It, it got me psyched up, all the concepts. But I never implemented. And so now I'm at the place where it's like, for this to be impactful, I need to pause, implement what was just said, and come back and reread. And so I'm implementing something right now, at a part of the book. Um, I've, I, I don't want to get into too much of the techniques because I've, I've done quite a bit of what was said to do um, in implementing. But um, I guess that would be the second part of what we're going to talk about, as you alluded to before. Um, Anything else, guys, from, from just the mindset part of it that you guys, any thoughts you, you all had, Melissa? No, I mean, I love the book and I'm the same as Kest and I haven't finished it yet because I'm like, I'm doing it all wrong. Like I'm a newbie investor. And so I'm not setting aside the goodness first or the profit first, right? I'm thinking this is what I have for marketing. This is my budget. Let's go. How can I maximize this? And I love what you said too, because as a female, I think we need to put like the goodness first and you're already intentionally carving out time in your calendar first for the profitable aspects of your life, which is your family, your wife, your little girl. I mean, if that's not something that people are doing too, because we can become super obsessed in our businesses and what we need to do on those daily tasks, but family first, like you're focusing on the most profitable aspect of your life, which is your family. So kudos to you. That's also a mindset. Shift it is. A lot of people. And yeah have to get in that habit it doesn't just happen that's why that's why this message and i love that you both <laughs> i love that you both said i haven't finished it because i'm implementing it i'm like that's it that's way better than finishing the book mm -hmm. you know like actually starting it and getting it because the sooner you start these habits the sooner you'll see the results and then you'll have those long term like if you build these habit muscles now you're going to have them down the road when your business is much bigger and when you start having these, mm. you know, huge investments and whatnot, it's like, get into this now, even like you said, Melissa, you might, a lot of people 
listening might have a W2 job or a nine to five job or whatever, which is fine. Maybe you don't need to carve out as much for your profit or for your, you know, paying yourself or whatnot, but still do 1%, uh, you know, like make sure that if you make a sale, you at least carve out a little percent for you to make sure that you are truly profitable and getting in that habit, because that's the bigger thing here. It's not all just about, oh, I've got to do these and I've got to get percentages right. And I've got to like do it just down the line. I know it's more about, am I in? Am I actually building the habit muscle of every time a, a deal closes or I make a sale or income comes in, am I allocating that to the things that matter first? Hmm. You know, I have a confession. I've actually had Profit First book a while back, but I never finished reading it. But I finished reading your book. Awesome. Well, <laughs> because I, I it's, appreciate it's, that. It's very applicable to me because I see myself in them, right? I see myself. Once you start doing those spreadsheet and doing those um, table comparison between a real estate investor and a business owner. It just clicks to me where, which side I'm on. Yeah. Right. And I, I know profit first for a while back. We all did. Right. But um, I never actually finished it until I read yours. Um, I know, you know, about, you know, creating different accounts and everything. And, but I'm always busy and I'm like, <sighs> Why do I need to create separate accounts for this? I can just kind of like put it in my mind. Like, okay, 10% for that. 15, you know what I mean? Right. What do you say to people like that? I think this is the case of we we can't see the forest through the trees. You know, like right now, it's the same thing with training a new person. Like, oh man, I hired this person, but I don't have time to train them. Where you're just like, well, if you train them, then you're going to have a lot more time if they're taking off a big item off your plate, you know, like mm. to get there. Same thing with this. The bank account setup takes the most time, you yeah. know, to do up front. Then you're just managing it on the back end and it's simply transferring money. Like yeah. you don't have to do that again. So it's like if we can get that one thing. I also tell people too, okay, you don't want to set up a bunch of bank accounts. You don't want to do a bunch of, you know, like the a lot of the steps. Set up one then. One mm -hmm. will take you less time. One you could be, maybe set up like at Charles Schwab or something like that's an online bank. Different from where you are, it's completely online. You don't walk in anywhere. You can set that up like within 20 minutes, even if you don't have an account with them. Set up at least one account, call it profit, and transfer 1% of everything just to get into the habit. Because wow. the habit's the most important part. So if you're like, I don't, I want to kind of see this work first, or like, what does this want to do? And I would tell people, okay, do a practical step then. Watch the profit start to grow and see if you're like, well, if I really implement this, where could I take this? You know, and then you start to see it because you're like, wow, money's actually gaining in there. I'm actually gaining ground. I would love to gain ground faster. You know, yeah. so it's seeing it actually work. It's seeing the Robert Kiyosaki's and, you know, the other people say, pay yourself first and then seeing it actually work. Then you're like, huh, yeah, I think I think I want to do it all. <laughs> so that's what I would say to people that, nice, that nice. have that. Objection. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Cool. And. I'll tell you for me, so I do business with my wife. And so awesome. it's getting her and she, and she's not a reader, quote unquote, right? Sure. And so every time I come with these new ideas, these new things, um, it's, I have to get buy-in. And so with the bank accounts and stuff like that, we've done that. Now the percentages where it seems like we're getting less um, to a degree, it's the struggle now in terms of and doing like the balance sheets and uh, um, all all those things. Those are the parts that I have to lead in a better way without getting frustrated um, as to they said we should do it. I'm a somebody's telling me who's who is knowledgeable and who's successful to do it. I'm ready to do it. I'm not asking much questions. I'm an empty vessel pour into me. And let me just take off and do it. She is the challenger. Well, why? Why? That doesn't make sense. And blah, 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 blah. Sure. And so I got to maneuver how that's done. And, and so that could be challenging and timely. But again, it's um, getting on the same page. And she slowly gets into it. And like you said, by the little and little that you show, um, so instead, like if it was me, I would have been finished by now, but because it's two, it may take me six months to just move on because I had to get the buy-in. Um, but 
six months of working towards it is better, like you said, with the new employee than not doing it at all. Because at some point, it may take me six months, but next year we're going to be off of the ramp, right? And so it's like, it's just one of those things. So I really, really, really love what you said. And so that's the mindset. Do we want to talk any bit any more about mindset or should we now ask about implementation and what that looks like? Um, because we've already talked about some bank accounts and all that type of stuff. So David, how do we make this practical in our lives? What does this, you've already said the mindset and what it means. What does it look like? So the practical side, which goes dovetails very nicely with what you were just talking about with your wife, that one of the first steps I talk about in my book, The Profit First for Real Estate Investing, is you need to know where you are right now. You need to know where am I coming from and what do I need? Because you cannot be floundering or with your spouse or significant other, or if you have a business, an official business partner, like you can't go from zero to a hundred. You know, you can't go from like, oh, let's change all this. Let's add all these percentages in and like, boom, our business is completely different. No, it is that, like you said, it's that progression. It's getting there over time because that's not only number one, how it needs to happen with your significant others and with your with your partners, but also with your business. Your business probably can't handle a drastic, let's pull the emergency brake and spin out and like go this way now. You know, so that's where when you first are start starting out, even if you are a W-2, if you, even if right now you have a W-2 job and you're just starting and to jump into real estate or whatever it might be, you need to know, what do I need? What do I need and my family need so we can cover our expenses? So that way we're taken care of. That's one of the first things to just figure out. What do I need? Then I also in the book talk about what do I want? Like what excites me? Like where can we go as a family and like as a unit here to be able to be like, not only are we covering what we need right now, we could cover those fun things. And then then the other, the significant others start to see, yes, this is why he was doing that. Or this is why she was doing that. So that's where getting the, getting where am I at right now? Because if you can get those numbers of like, okay, I know I need X amount of dollars per month. This means either I need to sell this many deals or, you know, this is what I need to do in my business per month in order to give myself, you know, X amount of dollars, 5,000, 10,000 a month, whatever it is for you. So getting that number first. Then if you've been in business, I would say, have you been able to achieve that so far? Like with the deals you've done, were, have you been able to pay yourself the 10,000 and still have others for marketing for sales for like, you know, like getting the actual business to be sustainable. So that's one of the first key points I talk about is where am I right now? If I'm, if I made a hundred thousand dollars in the last quarter off the sales of my houses and I paid myself 20,000, I've made, I paid myself 20%. Is that enough of what I'm making? And if not, it's going to show me this is how much I need to make in order to get there. So this is why a lot of people jump from their W-2 jobs into real estate investing, but they have no plan of like, what do I really need to make? What does that mean in deal terms? Like if I'm going to wholesale properties, how many do I need to wholesale? Or if I'm going to fix and flip them, like on HGTV, like how many of those do I need to do? You know, like with an average profit of this much in order to pay myself what I need and to have more left over for the business to be able to expand and grow. So that's the first thing. Get where you are right now and what you need. The second thing is what everyone's been talking about here, the bank accounts. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. <laughs> that one is more of like right now, the biggest mistake I see in real estate investing and entrepreneurs and like jumping into business is creating one bank account where all income and expenses go out and it's just toss in a cash salad. Just toss in the money everywhere. You have no idea what's in that account. One day you feel like a king or a queen. The next day you feel like a pauper because it's like, <laughs> I've got a hundred thousand in there today. I've got ten dollars in there tomorrow because you know, like I I saw there was money in there, so I spent it all. You know, or I saw there was money in there and I spent it, but then the payroll ran and then marketing ran and you know, like all these expenses went out. So that's where that that is probably one of the biggest stress points in people's business. Mm. Is, when they have to think of the money, but they have no idea how, what's going on. Not So they're looking at the bank account and they're like, oh, shoot, I don't have money in there. I got to go sell a deal or I got to go do this. So that's where setting up accounts helps you to separate out. What do I need? What is my business running off of? And what do I need to run off of? So I call those accounts that are for the business owner, the golden trio. Mm -hmm. So Oscar probably read this in the book, but I call them the, Oscar, the, the, the golden trio because... 
I love the big epic sagas like Star Wars, Harry Potter, you know, like these got the three main heroes like Luke, Han, Leia, and they've got the golden trio of heroes always pushing the story forward for good. Well, when you start your business and you get started, your business is your epic saga. It is your story that you are going to be telling your children one day or your, you know, the people in your life, how they're going to remember you. So you need to make sure that your business is winning. You need to make sure you have a golden trio to make sure that good is always winning in the end for you. So that's where you need to make sure having that golden trio of accounts. So what are those? Number one, a profit account. Number two, an owner's compensation account. And number three, an owner's tax account. So those three, to make sure those are all for the benefit of the owner. So the profit account is for where you take quarterly distributions, where you say, now I'm going to set aside from all deals a percent into this profit account. And then on a quarterly basis, I'm going to take money actually out of there because I don't need it for to run the business or for to pay myself a regular salary. This is strictly the reward for starting a business, for starting to invest, for trading 40 hour work weeks, working for someone else, 80 hours for yourself. You know, it's like making yourself feel like a business owner, mm -hmm. getting that reward that we all seek. We're all seeking that. That's why we start the businesses is to have the profit to do what we set out to do. I started my business so I could have the time to spend with my daughter and make sure that I built that in. You know, it's those types of things that we want that the profit account affords for us. The owner's compensation is the how you pay yourself first. Is like this is the, the manifestation of Robert Kiyosaki and everyone saying, here's how you pay yourself. You set up an owner's compensation bank account and you make sure from every single deal or every single sale that you have, money goes into that account. And you can pay yourself on a consistent basis, like every week, every month, bi-weekly. However, this would be like your salary to yourself or distributions to yourself to make sure you're getting compensated for the work you do in your business. Because if you can't pay yourself, you don't have a business. And if you're starting out, you might not need a ton of money from there, but you need to get into the habit of paying yourself until your your salary from your business can cover whatever you're making from wherever else. Because that's when you know, now I can quit and not have to worry about every day if I'm making ends meet. So then the third account that owner's tax is when you start a business, you know, the government's not going to just take the money from you. They're <laughs> going to, they're going to forcibly come for you, you know, like at the end of the year, but may, it's not going to be like you up to this point with your W-2 and the, your company does it automatically. For, if you're making profit, which you will with this system, you need to mm -hmm. make sure that you're saving for taxes as well. If you're going to buy rentals, that's a different story. I talk about that in the book a lot, very in depth. And that's one of the reasons for the real estate investing book. But if you're doing like fix and flips or wholesaling properties or like just typical real estate investing, like from that aspect of active type investing, you need to make sure you're saving throughout the year. So at the end of the year, it's not tax time. And you're like, oh, shoot, I've got to, I've got to like sell four deals right now so that yeah. I can cover my taxes and getting into like getting into that stress, you know, and that anxiety. So those are the three main bank accounts that we want. I want you to open that are for the owner's benefit. You already have an operational expense account for your business. That's like that fourth account. So you're already paying your expenses. But then a, another account that I like to set up is the income account. Mm. Income where everything comes in. So that way, this is just a holding bucket for income or for deposits. And then you push out to those other accounts like by what you know you need in those other accounts. So now you're in control of the cash flow management of your business. You now make sure that once money comes in and deposited from a sale or whatever, you're making sure you're managing it and pushing it to those other accounts rather than having that one big account where it's all just going in and out and you have no idea what's happening. Yeah. Now you feel more in control. You get to see that. And we didn't talk about profit and losses or by, you know, balance sheets or like financial statements. This is cash. This mm -hmm. is why I feel like it resonates with owners because we all have to deal with the cash anyway. You might as well save yourself a lot of headache by setting up a simple system like this to manage the flow of that money. Cause a lot of people say to buy bank accounts. Are you nuts? Like that's going to take a lot of time. <laughs> you know, like Oscar's like thinking, why, why do I have to start these <laughs> bank accounts? It's for the habits and to help you gain that clarity. But like I said, at least set up the profit account. Mm -hmm. At least do that. Set up one account and like see the habit start to work. So mm -hmm. that way you want to open the other accounts. But that's yeah. the core of profit first. It's like the envelope method for your personal finances. Yep. If you've ever heard of that, you know, like mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey's made that popular. A lot of other yep. people have made that popular, but it's the same thing. Only now these are for making sure you're putting the right things first. So that way you can be a healthy business and you can actually be the business owner because let's face it, Small business owners, we're not, when we first start out, we're not Snapchat. 
we're not Facebook. We're not Instagram. We're not going to yeah. take a bunch of venture capital and, <laughs> you know, like be, be bleeding profits and still being putting money on the table, you know, like, so that's where we have to make sure we're taken care of. We have a simple system for ourselves to make sure we've got the money right now to be able to grow as the way we want to grow and grow in a healthy way. So there it is. There's the, the nuts and bolts. If I had to boil it down, open one bank account, call it profit and transfer 1%, just get into that habit. Mm, mm, yeah, that's that's a lot there over there. But uh, I, I hope that people can stop and pause and write some notes and look at the show notes and, and redo this. Because, I mean, those are basically the entire chapters on, on profit for, for real estate investors or yep. real estate investing, right? So I actually, uh, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'm dealing with the tax issue right now, hmm. right? Because I made some money, right? Um, so I've been behind on my tax returns. Right. Yeah. So I've, you know, everyone does that sometimes. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, you are not alone there. I'm sorry yeah. to cut you off, like, but you are not alone. <laughs> yeah. uh, we work with 40, over 40 investors on a monthly basis. Now, a lot of them come to us just like that. I talk about that in the book, too. You know, like there's a very well-known real estate investor who got very behind yeah. and then he implemented profit first. And now he's very ahead, you yeah. know, like of where he needs to be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So and don't feel bad. Yeah. And that's where I am right now. Like I, I literally just finished my 2020. Yep. Right. And I, right now it's like 12 days before 2021 ends. Right. Yep. And I'm seeing my PL. Right. And I'm saying, shoot, I actually made some decent money this year. Hmm. Right. So, like, and I look at my, my one all in one account. Right. right? And I'm like, shoot, <laughs> I got to put a chunk of that. Yeah. You know, and I get to leave some of that. And I now I get a plan and I have 12 days. Either I, I buy a huge property. <laughs> right in 12 days or i gotta i gotta separate that and i gotta make sure that it's my now my operating expense or my operating forecast it's good for 2022 yeah right but this is this is the typical investors huh? right this is the typical real estate investors we don't look at stuff until the last quarter right so this is great this is so yeah. great we uh I've got a great story about this. We've been, if you don't mind, I can yeah, share go real ahead. quick. Go so it. we're working with this investor. We've worked with him for two years now. And he he does about one fix and flip a quarter. So, I mean, not a ton. You know, this is not someone doing five deals a month. And he's got about a little portfolio of properties too. And the first year we worked with him, he came to us $70,000 in the hole. Like he was already behind, like, you know, like had lost 70,000 the year before. And, the, and that year too, like he talked with his accountant and she said, like, I would never go into real estate looking at your numbers and the books here. And he's just like all defeated. So then he came to us the next year and we started working together, started implementing profit first. Like he's a hero of this story here because he like he took it and ran with it. And at the end of the next year, not only because now he was focused on profit, he had a bottom line profit. He had a call with his accountant at the end of 2020. And she said, you know, looking at your numbers. Yeah, I would definitely go into real estate <laughs> now. And she and he said to her, OK, like, tell me what my tax liability is. And so she tells him, like, even with rentals and because he had a portfolio, even with doing all the deductions we possibly can, you still owe this amount of money. And it was a pretty significant amount. And he was like, well, I'm glad I get to pay taxes this year because I actually made money. But let me see. Let me go to my tax accounts right now. So he went to him and with his tax accounts, he had like a hundred dollars over what she had wow. told him, like wow. that he owed. And Amazing. he's like, Yeah. So like the his stress levels, boom. He's like, Where do I send the money? So after she fell off the floor, you know, and picked herself up off the floor and put herself back in her chair, she's like, <laughs> What do you mean send the money? He's like, Yeah, I've got it ready right now. It was like January of 2021 or December of 2020, like right at the end of the year last year. And so she she was like, Okay, yeah, send it here. She he's like, Yeah, this is what Profit First has done for me. So then it gets better. How can it get better than that? But it gets better because he called me at the end of this year, like a month ago. He's like, you know what? I wanted to have my meeting early with my CPA and look at where I would end up for 2021 with my taxes. And so he calls me and says, you know, she's like, well, you made a lot of money again. And, you know, like with your investing and with your uh, rentals and whatnot, this is what the tax liability is going to be. And so he looked at that number again. And this time he had saved like, almost $20,000 extra than what he had. So he's like, I'm giving myself a tax refund this year. <laughs> so he's putting that money into his profit account and bought something like for his family because wow. that's what it's his money now. 
And so like, mm. he's like, this has been incredible. And so, yeah, this is just that one person with that story. It's just, this is the power of handling it ahead of time versus giving yourself that stress and anxiety. This is where you could see yourself like ending up. If you just start the habits, it didn't happen overnight. It took him that first year of implementing it, starting to save the cash. Then at the end of the year, he saw the benefit. And then this next year, he saw it even greater. So it's like, this is a journey, a journey as an entrepreneur of where am I right now? Where could I end up? And like closing that gap with simple steps, setting up bank accounts. I'm not going out and telling you, get your accounting degree and like learning finance. I'm telling you, go set up a bank account. Can you do that versus like what it takes to be a CPA? Yes, that should be a simple step. So there's a, I just had to tell that story because I absolutely love that one where Amazing. you're not thinking that. about setting up that one account, at least a tax account, yep. set it up. Mm. You can't put a price tag on mental health. Like right? I'm just thinking about the entrepreneur that stresses about taxes. Like that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Cass, go ahead. Yeah, it's it's so, so good. And what I want to emphasize here is that I'll, I'll give a quick story on, on my wife and I. So when we met, this is now three years ago, we had like one unit, right? And so... What I had her do because I was listening to all of Robert Kiyosaki's podcast and just really trying to seek information, um, we did set up multiple accounts without knowing why. I'm like, that's just what they said to do. You know, I heard it on a podcast, you know, right. and it's so similar when you read a lot of these books or How to Be a Millionaire, The Secrets of a Millionaire Mind, all these things, they do have buckets. And, and so I just took action. I'm like... I don't really know why, babe, but this is what we should do, right? So we always had different bank accounts. As I continue to grow in real estate, continue to take action, then it started to get clearer. And starting in reading the book, then now I could put a definitive label yeah. on things. And so last year, we also got a tax refund back from ourselves. Awesome. Because we saved taxes. Yeah. We saved on taxes. It's one of the few accounts that we kind of have that works. We we have way more accounts than we need because we just open accounts. Shoot, we even have accounts for um a play account where we put aside money for like we 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 have listed birthdays, yeah, Father's Day, Mother's Day, all this stuff. We just put aside money every month. We figured out how much it would typically cost to buy gifts and all that type of stuff. And so now we don't argue about birthday celebrations and going to have a large steak and all that type of stuff. Yeah. It's already in the account. Christmas, there's no argument. It's already right. in the account. You <laughs> yeah. know? Um, and so we live just from listening and all of this. Now, now in reading Profit First, now the labels are more definitive. Um, and we in all of that, we never had a profit first account. Hmm. We paid some to ourselves, but it was more wishy-washy. It wasn't mandatory. Right. And now this is becoming so much more definitive in taking the right steps and knowing exactly why we're doing these things. And the point that I'm making is, you can learn a bunch on YouTube, just like I was just randomly taking pieces, but finding a mentor, doing a like a reading a book, and just kind of going through this system or business would get you much further. This was three years ago, and now we're here. All I had to do was read the right book and implement, and I would have had so much more concepts, so much more profit in our lives. And so with that being said, in terms of, I see sim simple CFO on here and you talk about your clients reaching out to you. Tell us a little bit about what you have going on um, at the side of the book. So you have the book, you have these systems, but it also sounds like you have something else going on where you work with investors. What does that look like? Yeah. I could talk about that. So Simple CFO, I started because I saw the need of 
investors just being able to have that clarity around their numbers, knowing that and what power that gave them back to make better decisions in order to make better profit. So that's where I started a fractional CFO service that, like I talked about at the beginning, part-time CFO on the team to help you with three main things. Number one, financial clarity, like actually knowing your numbers, getting them in place, getting KPIs, like key performance indicators, the reporting, making sure you are able to at least interpret it, have a, have a conversation with someone about it and say, what do we need to take? What actions do we need to take from here? We set up a CFO dashboard, which shows, you know, people like these are the numbers that we're going to focus on together. And a part of that is our second step, profit first for real estate investing or just profit first for the other types of businesses that we help as well too. But we implement the cash flow system that we talk about, hold people accountable to it and help them define what are the percentages that go towards these accounts? Where are you going? What is your business need to provide for you? You know, and making sure that we hold them accountable to paying themselves and to being profitable and like focusing on that. And then the third thing we do is what are you doing for long term wealth? You know, like, are you setting up self-directed mm -hmm. IRAs? Do you have rentals that you're buying? Like, what is your long-term wealth plan here? You know, so that's another thing that we do as well. So that's what we do at Simple CFO Solutions. So we make sure that we have the, and there's the link right there, simplecfosolutions.com. If you want to work with us, also have the book there, the podcast on the little tabs at the top too. So to help people, but I wanted to, I wanted to mention one thing as well too, that Melissa brought up about oh, first i love the name of the show intentional investor because this is very much in line of what profit first is like being very intentional with your mm -hmm. money versus just being sporadic and erratic you know like just yeah. going crazy with it chickens with our heads cut off <laughs> so that i love that from that aspect but then what you said too about the psychological effect of like making these decisions and whatnot melissa of like being healthy mentally you know and like not having that stress because I, I dedicate chapter six in the book to reserves and how reserves help grow your business. And one of the main points I talk about is the psychological effects of not having to live deal to deal, not having to live paycheck to paycheck and what that unlocks because you're working from your purpose and not from fear anymore. Like now you're not scared that, oh man, what's going on? Like, mm -hmm. where am I going? It's like, I need that next deal. Then you become a motivated buyer and make horrible decisions. You know, it's like you need to make sure that you are working from that purpose and not from fear. And that's one of the things the reserves do. So I had to say that because you struck a chord there when you said it's like good for the mental health, uh, Melissa. So I thought that was uh, yeah, just one you. thing that I, yeah, that I hid inside the book. But simplecfosolutions.com, you can find all the stuff. My links are there for Facebook, Instagram, if you want to connect there too. Like I said, I have our podcast. If you want to work with us, there's the apply button right there too. So we've got, Anything that you need from what we do as well, right on that, right at that link. I need That's to get fantastic. my wife on, on this, man. I'm going to send her over to you. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's amazing. So, David, you are really striking a chord with me right now. So as we move this interview forward, I'm just yeah. going to read part of this because this is a pretty big deal. So your goal, as you stated, is to completely transform real estate investing industry. When it comes to how real estate investors deal with their finances, you want to bring investors true financial clarity and freedom and help every investor stop living deal to deal. David, where does that passion come from? It comes from a lot of different places. I've had a lot of good people pour into me in the real estate investing world. That first guy that mm -hmm. I worked nights and weekends, like for eight months without taking a paycheck and just wanting to learn the business <laughs> and then actually working with him for years. And then he actually in 2008 and nine lost a lot of his properties. So I'm like, mm. I don't want, I don't want friends like that to lose a lot of their properties or like lose again. And then there was another investor that I worked with in Richmond, Virginia. Like after I'd been working with that investing company and had my portfolio, I sold a lot of that able to move wherever. So I moved to an area where I started working with another investor. I really liked him. We bonded and he also didn't know his numbers. So I started diving in with him. Turns out he had poured a lot of his money into his properties, but didn't even know, didn't even know his money was tied up there. And he was able to, after seeing the numbers, like refinance hundreds of thousands of dollars out, put him in a good position. This was right before the pandemic too. So like he was sitting pretty whenever a lot of other people were you know, panicking. And like, he was like, I, this has changed, transformed my business and my life. That was the spark of starting this company. And then I had another mentor that I called when I started Simple CFO to help with the actual numbers who said, have you read Profit First? I'm like, no, I've never read that. So I, he told me, read the book. So I read it that night, took 10 pages of notes. 
then once I started implementing it with the company, you know, and with the real estate investors and saying like this framework works and it's amazing. That's when I reached out to Mike and said, I need to get this message out. Like, that's why I want to be on podcasts. I want to write this book, this message of you don't have to live deal to deal. You don't have to buy more rentals. You don't have to do more deals. You need to take your profit first. So that way you can build a habit. So that way, when you do go buy more rentals or you do more deals, you'll be more profitable and not just spinning your wheels. So that's where the passion came from. And now it's just like, I've got a big mission getting this out there, getting this message out, because I truly believe this is the system to save people from like the crashes, any crashes, not just even like a 2008 or nine, but personal crashes that we have in our lives. You know, like things come up, like you need to make sure that you're, you are secure and that you have a system for this. And this is like the missing link. I feel like for every business, because this is the way to look at finances without having to be the finance person. This is a way to look at it as the mm -hmm. entrepreneur of like, I can manage this. I can do this. Like if I didn't have anyone else, one else on the team, I can move money in a bank account and I can make sure that we're healthy. So that's why yeah. I'm so passionate about this message and seeing the people that we've actually helped completely turn their businesses around too. Yeah, you are the real deal. And I'm so excited for our, our audience because this is coming at a perfect time. We're going to launch this show in January. And so when people hear this, they're going to be like, all right, what do I need to do this year? What can I start? And this is the perfect time to get your finances right. I mean, even yeah. if it's not just in the business, but even in just your real love knowing where you're bleeding money. Um, so just to kind of recap on a few of the things that you said, because there's so much gold in this interview. So you need to know where you are, assess the situation, right? Set up all of your accounts. The three that you pinpointed earlier were profit account. You need to have an owner's compensation account. And then also the tax account, which is vital, which as yeah. we said, you can't put a price tag on your mental health. And that's going to help so many entrepreneurs by setting that money aside. Guys, yeah. what are a couple of the key takeaways that you guys have gotten out of this interview so far? Oscar Kess? I mean, it's it's a lot. I mean, to me, it's if, if David, if I, I'll, I'll give you a, a something you, you, you should make, make a merch saying make profit a habit. Yeah. And, and print that like all over, man. You're going to make like, I mean, you're going to start a movement with that, right? Remember this podcast, make profit a habit. Print that out, like stickers, T-shirts everywhere, right? Yeah. That's, you know, and I'm I'm a marketing guy. That's why like, I'm like, okay, that's that's for you, David. Right, right? yeah. It um, resonates with a lot of people. Yeah, and and number two, um, I know we haven't talked about this, but we talked this about before the show. And I feel like, you know, we're gonna run out of time, but I, I just, I just want to mention this, this sentence that you have at the end of the chapter, um, and it, it involves with me using other people's money. Yeah. Right? And we are a real estate investor. We use OPM is thrown all over, right? OPM, 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 and all the time. And people is like, oh, I need PML, I need HML, I need blah blah blah, and everything. But this resonates to me, right? I'm gonna read it out. If you don't manage your finances currently you do not deserve private money. I mean, that resonates with me, right? Because, um, you know, you're dealing with money, right? At the end of the day, you know, you're borrowing money, you're using money to make profit. And if you don't have good finances, you don't deserve other people's money, right? And and we can have a life on this later on. And I would, I would love to have you back on a life and we discuss this and we dissect this, right? Yeah, for sure. But, you know, we got a good start. You know, we got a good start at this point, you know, and this is, we want to leave this show, you know, having action items. Yeah. Right. And before you, you throw out the term OPM, PML, HML, you need to know your finances. Yeah, I that yeah, for sure. I go into that in a whole chapter yeah. in the book and but you do deserve to be profitable. You do deserve to manage that so that way you have that. So like mm -hmm. once you unlock that and realize that, you know what? I do deserve this. I do deserve for the business to be healthy. I do deserve for myself and my family to be healthy. That's when you start to unlock these things and you then you see it. Then then the OPM money flows and you know what? You've got a system for it and you're not sweating it anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's where yeah. Could go yeah. on to that forever and ever, but I yeah. digress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, what I would say the major takeaway is is just get started. Like, yeah, there you just go. Do it. Yeah. You know? um, get that one account and do it. Like it's gonna start changing lives. Like just being able to 
again, get money back from taxes. It's like free money, you know, yeah. like it's all, all of these things, man. I'm, I, it's, that's my major takeaway. I don't even want to go crazy and, and talking more about it, but just do it, get started, implement one thing from this and it's going to start changing your lives. Yeah. That's my major takeaway. I love it. Awesome. And David, if you were to leave a one thing with the audience, because you've dropped a lot of goodness here, like what would it be? Obviously, everyone needs to go out and get this book, right? Well, they, that's a pretty good one. I would say, <laughs> I would say also um, set up the one account, set up one account, transfer 1%, like see it work. If you do that a year from now, you'll look back on this podcast and say, wow, I'm really glad I did that. I've, I have more money than I ever thought I would in my business when I first started you know, or when I, wherever I am, or if you're way down the road. So I promise that'll give you the greatest return from this podcast. Hmm. Amazing. And so David, I know that there's going to be a lot of people that want to connect with you. So you, will you please share how people can follow you, like you, yeah. where they can find you? Go for if it. If you go to simplecfosolutions.com, that's where we have like Instagram, Facebook. We have a private uh, Facebook group, Profit First for Real Estate Investing. If you want to join that as well, too, people ask questions all the time. I'm in there at least once a week answering all those questions. And then, you know, that if you go to that link, we also have the book available as one of the tabs at the top and podcast at the top. And then if you want to work with us, too, simplecfosolutions.com. I love, love it. it. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. And we do have a couple more minutes left. Guys, you guys want to have some fun with David? Sure. Let's do it. David, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do it. We have a new segment that we have created just for you. So put on your little, put on your pants do because it. we're going to get ready. Yeah, let's do it. First with David. So, so David, in this series of questions, you're going to answer some of your first. Get nervous, get your palms sweaty because you have no idea what I'm dealing you. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So first, this is easy. What is the first home that you lived in? That was the one that I talked about on this podcast, the one where I bought off the hut house. And then, um, you know, officially, I guess when I was married, as a kid, I lived in a house. But when I mm -hmm. bought my first house, it was that one off the MLS. It was off the HUD, HUD home store, bought it off the MLS, and then, lived, you know, bought it, fixed it up, and then lived in it for two years. Okay, got it. Yeah, that was a win-win. Okay, so that's also the next question. Did you mm -hmm. cheat? You might have cheated. First property you invested in. Yeah, it was that one too. So I did cheat. I bought the first house, but I knew it was going to be an investment too. So I mm. rented it out right away so I could cash flow. And then once we actually moved in there, you know, that's where after two years, lease option is as well too. So that was the first official property that I invested in. That was a smart move. Now talking about smart moves, let's talk about your wife a little bit. Let's do it. So first date with your wife. Talk about in that. In college. There was a banquet, like a Valentine's banquet that we went to together um, that was uh, just a very formal banquet where you get all dressed up, tuxedo and like formal gowns. It was pretty cool. So that was the first mm. official date. Dude, what, what you, you remember that pretty, pretty clearly. Like, it's almost like you were ready. Right? I know. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, David, what did she wear? Do you remember what she wore that Yes, night? blue dress with a black little, you know, sweater over it. Wow. Got it. Okay, so what is the first place you would go on a man's weekend? Now that one's harder on a man's weekend. Mm -hmm. Probably golfing somewhere, maybe Myrtle Beach or you know, maybe to the Mass. I'd love to go to the Masters, go to Augusta. Mm -hmm. So that's probably where I would I would pick. I got a hookup for you. Okay, cool. Let's do it. People. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So why Myrtle Beach? Just curious. Uh, just my dad took a trip there one time with his brothers and he loved it. They did like a bunch of the courses there and like did 36 holes, like, uh, like three days in a row. And just sounds like my type of thing. Love it. Good memories. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay. And so let's say we take you out virtually and we go to the bar and you order a drink. It's on Keston. He's paying. Well, actually Oscar, I mean, well, no, he Oscar owes a lot of taxes. So yeah, Keston's paying. Yeah. I owe a lot of taxes. I need work. <laughs> Someone I'll buy me a beer. What do you what do you drink? Like, what's your drink of choice? I'm actually a teetotaler. I love I drink water, so I would order water there. I really don't drink much out. The probably my favorite drink is the freckled lemonade at Red Robin. It's those real strawberries in the glass. So like that's about it. So I'm pretty boring when it comes to that department. 
Love it. I've even Isn't got this gallon of water thing that I keep <laughs> right next to me all day. That's pretty awesome. I'm right there with you. I'll, I love I'll it. Same thing. Love it. Mm. Hey, change my mind. I'll buy that drink. I got uh -huh. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay. So now what's the first thing? This gets a little bit deeper. So what's the first thing that you want your little girl to think of when she thinks of her dad? <laughs> the, all the time I spent with her. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, I think since she was basically since she's been able to walk, like at one and a half or two or whatever. I, and in my mind, it was just, you know, three years ago. So mm -hmm. whenever she started, then just that I was there for her that I, we played together a lot in that she had a dad that was involved with her in her life. Mm. I love it. Amazing. Nothing else matters. And then the last question is, unless the guys want to win out there is what would you do first? If you had to start investing all over again? Set up the profit first bank accounts. I would, <laughs> I would, <laughs> I'd have a lot more money today. I tell uh -huh. you what, I actually That's interviewed cool. someone uh, on my podcast and I, they said they're very well known in the real estate space. And they were like, if I would have set up profit first at the very beginning, I'd have $5 million cash more in my account right now, like because of this system. So wow. the, after I picked myself up off the floor, I was like, well, there you go. So that's why I always answer that. If I would have started at the beginning, I'd have this started, start those habits and I'd mm -hmm. have a lot more money as well too. Now. Mm. So true. That's a perfect answer. So true. Yeah. Yep. I love it. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, meet David Richter. David, it has been a pleasure to have you on our show today. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you. It's Thank been you, a David. pleasure being on. Awesome, yes. man. Thank you. And guys, we'll go ahead and take it out. So that wraps up today's show. We are 1000% right on time. So we hope that you guys tune into the next one. And again, join us, subscribe to us, and we'll go ahead and put all these notes in the show notes below. Until next time. Peace. Bye. Bye, guys. Hey guys, it's Melissa here from the Intentional Investor Show. If you like what you hear, and if you want to dig deeper into your own real estate journey, hit the subscribe button below. We would love for you to join us. Thank you so much. Until next time.